E, what's good, YouTube? Rifle Thompson, back with another video, and this a first. This is a this is a part one of a whole series that's gonna improve your workflow tremendously, make you a better producer. This is for all the music producers out there. So if you like uh making beats, you wanna make beats, booty woo, you wanna get better at making beats, man. This video is right here, right here is for you. If you make beats in FL Studio, that's even better, but this can actually be applicable to any doll. Just have to like you know navigate around that doll, whatever the case may be. But this tool, no lie, is gonna help you make three to six beats a day. You know what I'm saying? Once you get in your groove, once you learn the little tricks like like music theory and all that type stuff. You know what I'm saying? But this right here alone is gonna help you tremendously, and this should kind of like be like the groundwork of like creating some kind of consistency in your quality of beats, right? So let's get straight into it. Oh, hold up, hold up. Can't do that because y'all ain't hit that like button. So hit that like button. All right, appreciate you. Now hit the red button because you got to subscribe because you're going to get more information. You got to keep coming back, keep coming back, keep coming back. And then comment below a fire emoji. You know what I'm saying? Comment below 100 emoji, you know what I'm saying? That's how I know you're really rocking with me, you know what I'm saying? So let's get into it. So this one tool is going to help your workflow so much, man, because it's things that we do as producers that we got to do over and over and over and over again. And it's bad enough we already looking at this gray uh, uh, music environment, you know what I'm saying, that we, <laughs> that we making beats in, man, that can get kind of boring after a while, so we want to automate some of these processes so that we can keep stuff fresh and new, you know what I'm saying, but at the same time, we can also have that consistency in our quality and our approach to beats, so this one technique is helpful to any type of producer, any level of producer, uh, and many veteran producers already know about this, this little secret or this little tool. Um, so without no further delay, let's get straight into what that is. And that is creating a template. All right. Making a template at FL studio, uh, Ableton, whatever doll you use is going to help you make three to six beats a day easily. And I'm going to tell you why, because you're going to automate three of the processes that we have to do all the time as producers. You're going to automate that. And then all you got to do is make the melody or make sure the drums sound good or change up, you know what I'm saying? Give some variation. You don't want to always stay the same, but let's give it a little variation, man. So let's get in straight to how to make a template at FL Studio. All right. So we're going to make this template in three different steps you got to have three components to have a real effective template if you're missing one of these components your template is going to be slumming man you know what i'm saying so make sure you have all three of these aspects in your template the first aspect and the aspect that most people are common uh commonly understand or like they already know is uh having your sound selection on point all right so you want to have your sound selection already on point. So let's open up a beat that's a little bit less organized, a little less worked out, worked on. Let's go with, uh, cause I kind of already did this video, but my music like wasn't working and I was just like, boom. So anyway, so the first part of this is, uh, your drum sound selection. So if you're a new producer and you don't have a whole lot of beats yet, you haven't been making beats, what you're going to do is you're going to go through a drum kit that you downloaded. You're going to go through that and you're going to select the sounds that you like for the type of beats that you want to make moving forward. And you're going to lay those out. You know what I'm saying? You can either lay them out like I have here as actually like placing where they will go in the beat. And just to give you an idea, that's not just not really the point of the beat. Uh, the video is to showcase beats, but just to give you a little idea of what it would sound, what this sounds like.
And she fell through the worst way. All right. But anyway, uh, yeah. So you know what I'm saying? It, it's a it's a vibe, right? You know. But it's really the drums. That, you know, shout out to the the sample maker. But yeah, it's really the drums that you want to like, kind of like, not have to pick through all the time. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna remove the melody elements and or the um the sample from this uh mock template all right so let's go ahead and do that right now so uh now if you like say for instance if the beat that you open up say if it has uh bst it uses a bst and it has midis or whatever the case may be you could just clear the midis out of the uh, channel rack and just leave the vsts and then that can help as well because now you don't have to look through and wait to load up all these vsts that you typically use over and over again you can just get straight to the good stuff all right so um so yeah let's just do that let's just do that right now so i'm gonna add in an instance of audio i mean not audio uh instance of analog lab all right, uh, I'm gonna add that in. I'm gonna put that on uh, channel one. Then I'll put that there. And then uh, other things, it's other little small techniques you can do, man. So let, let, let's just let, let's just get into all that, man. Cause I I really didn't even go in that that depth. I didn't even go in that depth the first time around. But bump it, I'm gonna do it now. You know what I'm saying? So. I'm doing this all off the cuff, so I might mess up again, but I'm not doing this video again, so, because I had, like, yeah, I'm not doing this video again, so, alright, so, you can select any scale that you love, and use the stamp tool, if you don't know how, if you don't know your scales already, use, use, uh, the stamp tool, drag that out to here you know what i'm saying basic stuff man basic stuff man so now you already got like uh you already got an idea of uh excuse me you already got an idea of like the scale that you want to go to go to you already got the drums already kind of laid out and man for real for real like let's just mute those right so now you got that, and I think, uh, what's it, like, shifting up, or, like, controlling up? No, it's not. Oh, it's option up. And like, uh, I, I'm new to, I'm kind of new to the Mac. I be using, like, my PC a lot, so I be forgetting. But, yeah, so you want to hit option up, put that there. So now you have your sampler that's just going to have some notes in there, just kind of like some guy, like a coloring book outline, like so you can trace a little bit. You got your sounds here, so once you make your melody and you know it's fire, you can just like load up and like just uh, bring in these elements, and now you're going to have a beat, and you'll be like, damn, I already got a beat, boom. And then you got to change out some sounds, change up the patterns, you know what I'm saying, add some snare rolls, add some hi-hat rolls, and you already done, so the beat aspect is done. So, just killed the game right there, right? So, that's one aspect, you know what I'm saying? Now, aspect or, yeah, aspect number two is you want to have the beat already, look. you want to have the beat already arranged, right? So, what you're going to do is you're going to hit option T, you're going to make a marker, you're going to call this intro. Uh, your intros are normally four to eight bars, then you're going to hit your verse option T again again your hook is eight bars then you're gonna hit verse that's 16 of them things and this could this uh, I'm not really adding in all this stuff and subtracting I'm not really counting but you'll get the gist of it you know what I'm saying and then your outro is a bars or oh, four to eight bars all right so now and i don't know what the heck is verser but uh let me name that all right so now you got your intro got your hook got your verse got hook two you got your outro so now your beat already structured like in a way where you're not messing around with stuff and like, bro, what the hell is going on? Also, for 
the very like new producers, when you're like moving stuff around in your playlist, make sure you have your snap the grid on because if you don't, you know, you'll find yourself like wondering why your beat sound like badly off beat and you're like, bro, what the heck is going on? It's not how it's supposed to be. A lot of times it's because you might be on no snap or a different snap, like one to six, and it's not like really snapping to the full like entirety of the grid. So make sure you have your joint online, bro. So it like drags the, the element of the pattern or the sound all the way through. All right. So we got those two components down, right? We Gucci, right? You would think. Now, if you stuck around all the way to the end and you ain't click off, man, put mixing. Mixing, M-I-X-I-N-G. Put mixing down below just to let me know that you stood all the way around. You just stuck all the way around, man. I really appreciate you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Or you, shorty. Like, you are very important, bro, to what we got going on over here. So the last aspect to this whole tutorial and to your templates, uh, before we get to saving it, making sure that it works, is uh, you want to have your mixing elements ready to go all right so as somebody that's been producing for a little bit i already know that all your melodies you need the eq out the low end i already know that and then additionally your high end your high not your high end but your high mid area and some of this treble that like is like really bad like in the higher 10ks 12ks areas or whatever you can eq that out as well because we don't need it it's just junk you know, it makes the mix cloudy, mix, uh, muddy and all that stuff. And you don't need that. So just EQ those little things out. Um, have your little reverb and stuff like that. And if you're using the BST like Analog Labs, Analog Labs is pretty cool. But if you're using the BST like Nexus and stuff like that, like you want to delete or not delete, but you want to turn down those reverbs because you don't want those reverbs to be complete competing with the reverb that you already have on your mixing channel. And if you didn't know so, free chicken, free game on uh, the mixing channel, we use soft clippers. We don't use limiters. Don't use limiters. Use yourself a soft clip clipper so that your beat can like punch through. Your 808 can punch through or your kick can punch through. Your 808 can hit. Like a soft clipper help you do that. So you'll have some like elements already here. So you know what I'm saying? You can even go in depth and, and rename these things. Like, this would be the melody. Woo -de -woo, blah, blah, blah. But that that's not too important. But you want to have your mixing channel already set up to a way where, especially in your melody, you already EQ'd out the low end or some of it so that you can get an accurate representation. Because a lot of times with some of these, um, uh, some of these VSTs, if you don't have the EQ... If you don't have your BST uh, EQ out, uh, sorry. If you don't have your low end EQ'd out, <laughs> your 808 is not going to hit. And you're going to be like, bro, why I can't hear it? Or why is it muddy? Woo -de -woo? It's because of that. All right. And the very last thing uh, with your mixing channel is that you want to go to your volume to uh, knob or tab or slider. You want to go to your volume slider, hit right click, and then hit create automation clip. What this is going to do is it's going to create an automation clip, right? But we want to just like, again, make our stuff a little bit more consistent, bro. I mean, there's trains of thoughts that say there's quality over quantity. And then there's people that believe that there's quantity over quality. Rather, whatever cue you decide to go with, this is going to help you achieve both because now your beats are going to be like uniform. They're going to have some structure to them. They're going to be similar, not the same, not the same, not the exact same, but similar. So this little master volume thing, uh, automation clip is just another one of those little, little attention to details that you got to have as a producer. So, you got that. So you got all three aspects. So let's run them down again. They sound selection. We did that in the channel rack, right? We selected our sounds that we like 
or we took a beat that we are we already was vibing with and we just have the uh beat uh, the the drum elements ready to go we can mute those and just have the melody aspects like a vst loaded up um just like ready and solo but once the beat or the melody is done we can just have the drums come in and we can see if that matches with what we got going on. If it does, if it don't, then we can just modify the sounds and the patterns accordingly. All right. Then what was the second, the second part? The second part was going into your playlist and structuring out the beat, adding an intro tab, using option T, adding a hook and verse and the outro. So that now when you're looking at this playlist, because when you have 12, 13 tracks of different patterns that you split out and now they're like all over the place, these little things will help you stay on task and make sure that like you don't get lost in the endless blocks that you got to move around, man. Because this is art, but you can get lost in the art if you don't have uh, a destination, man. For real. So... And the very last thing is what? We're going to go into our mixing channels and we're just going to set up a little effects that we need to have. And the most important is like on your melody, you want to have an EQ of some sort, reverb. I would just say solo that for now, but you would want to use a reverb. And for me personally, I find that using the same reverb on multiple instances of like sounds in your beat it makes it sound like they're all in the same area not in the same area as in on top of one another but in the same area as if like they was like like it's the drummer was in the room with the guy that's playing the violin you know what i'm saying or whatever sounds you're using so that's just a little trick 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 trick, trick tip i don't know it's just like free chicken free game i'm just giving it out man you know what i'm saying and also, soft clipper on the master, that's going to make your joint knock, no limiter. So if you have that on your F, uh, on your uh, FL Studio mi uh, mixer, master, you want to turn that off, get rid of it, don't need it, have a soft clipper. So once you complete all those steps, right, it's only a couple more things to do. That's the save as, all right? So you want to save as your template. What I like to do is I like to use explanation point. Call the type beat that I like to use, like to do. All right, and then use the BPM. So now I already know what the type beat is, and I know the tempo, so we good, right? So then we're gonna save it, boom. Then we're gonna go to general settings, and this will not show like this because uh, when you first make a new template. It won't show at all. So what you're going to have to do is, is you're going to have to close FL Studio. Reopen it. Go back to, uh, sorry, go back to general settings. Go back to your default template. And then you want to select it. All right. You notice it wasn't there because... Like I said, I made this this video before, so it really wasn't there. It just like it's just like a FL, like I guess like computer thing, like computer memory thing. Like it has to go through those steps. So I'm gonna have to close it again just to demonstrate to you that this is really working, and I know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? But you'll see that the template is gonna be ready for us, and we can just go straight to work, man. You see what I'm saying? Boom. So you know what I'm saying? You got your sounds kind of laid out. You got a key. You know what I'm saying? You can get in depth. You can you can call that you can uh call the template by the key that you're using, right? You got uh you got your your beat structured out, right? And you got some effects on your uh your uh melody or in your in your uh, masters or uh, your mixing channel. Um I can't talk right now in your mixing channel. And then you even got a little automation right here as far as like fading out the beat. So everything is consistent. And now you can just get to making three to six beats in a day. You know what I'm saying? So if you found this video helpful and I sh and I'm sure you did, man, please help your brother out, man. Please help your boy out, man. 
hit the like button, man, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell, man. Come back, man. I'm going to have more videos for you. Man, stay tapped in with me. Stay tuned in with me, man. I appreciate you, gang. Be easy and keep making them beats, man. You know what I'm saying? Rifle Thompson, I'm out of here.